Hey all, Space Dad here, coming to you from a secret facility that we'll be talking more about next quarter. Now, Alpha 318 has a whole lot of features that players have been anxious for updates on. And while we'll get to all of them like we always do before this quarter is out, we wanted to take this week's show and slow things down a bit for an uninterrupted, unabridged chat about persistent entity streaming what it is, how it's been going, where it's at now, and what's coming up next. And we'll get back to our normal features next week. But for now, please join me in welcoming Benoit Beausejour, CTO of our partners at Turbulent, for what we're calling our very first PES report. So, Benoit, welcome back to ISC. To start things off, give us a nickel version of what persistent entity streaming is. It's a persistent entity streaming is a system that allows us to persist the entire game world and restore it from disk so that it's never lost and changes from players are meaningful. And what's that look like to the player? How will players know if PES is working or not? Uh, it's gonna, they're going to know because every time they come back to the same server, the state will be the same. So if you leave a ship, a can, or any kind of items in the world, it'll stay there. You blow up a door, it'll be blown on that server forever. But part of this is something that cleans up the junk afterwards, right? Yeah, some items will be covered under lifecycle management, which will get recycled, right? Because obviously we need some kind of janitorial system behind the scenes. But there also are discussions about gameplay to do that, to help players, to, you know, to get players to help us clean up the game world. But yes, those are that's a new avenue that persistent entity streaming opens up. All right, so we brought everyone up to speed on what PES is. Let's get to the updates. Now, last time we heard anything was from Chris's letter from the chairman back in May, where we'd just dropped something on the ground, shut the servers down, brought the servers back up, and it was still there. What's happened in the last three months? Uh, well, so the, the, the team, which is a fairly large team at this point, has been uh, working really hard to get our first stage delivery to what we call game dev, which is our main branch. What that means is we've moved from a prototypical work branch into what everybody in the company is using to develop the game. And so that's the big achievement is now the, the technology is in the game dev branch. So everybody is using it in day to day, day in, day out testing. Uh, and every, you know, so all the bugs appear, they're right in our faces. We fix them right away. It's been a you know, bit of a crazy, crazy time. But that's the big achievement in the last three, three months is that we've stabilized the technology enough so that the entire company can now be working on it. Uh, define crazy. <laughs> the, define crazy, everything being on fire. Like, uh, you know, this technology touches on every subsystem in the game. So transit was busted. Uh, you know, like uh, stuff was persisting in the wrong locations. Uh, you can log into the game because uh, obviously with PES comes the a, a new login flow to get players into the game because we need to bring your items into a new database. So that entire system was also uh, rocky to get in because there's a lot of cases uh, to deal with, like timeouts. If you have too many items, what happens if you have too many items? Uh, you know, and dealing with the different all the different stages of the login from authentication to you being actually spawning in the game, and so. It's been a lot of debugging, uh, encountering issues on different types of machines. Because when we start, you know, all the developers have some pretty good machines on the on the, on those uh, feature branches. But when we move to game dev, now we're exposed to all kinds of different hardware, and you know, uh, timing issues occur. Those are the weird ones to find. Uh, they're really difficult to trace, in fact. But the so that's been the the bit the craziness is getting exposed to way more machine types or users as well right like uh, the game requires a lot of resources to run when we develop locally and so sometimes you know one service doesn't start on somebody's machine and that causes you know all these crashes to start being reported and now we have to investigate them and so that's been a bit of a, it's the real time effect that makes it crazy is like you know it's not we're not making technology in a bubble anymore where everybody's using it and so that makes it really really difficult to, to follow but it's been it's been fun finally get the technology in the hands of people that can uh, really adjust it for the game and for the players. And so that's been fantastic. So that's been the last couple months, but where are we at right now? So right now on the technology side, we're in 
bug fixing mode, right? And identifying the elements that are left that we are still, you know, rough around the edges. So let's, I don't want to call it polish. It's really bug fixing, bug testing, stabilization. Uh, stabilization is the right word. That's what we're, we're doing right now. So it's feature parity and making sure everything works the way it should. Uh, on the other side, there's a new team that's kicking in work, which is deployment teams, right? So this is taking the technology that we have working on a game dev build and locally and basically breaking it up into a lot of small services that run in the cloud. So the operationalization of the technology, that's what we're uh, really focusing on now. Uh, it's like a dependent project, right? So this allows us to basically uh, bring the game to you guys. Uh, that's where we can do PTU. So PTU is for a lot larger than <laughs> a developer running the game on his machine. Uh, even though there's tons of services when we go to the cloud, you know, we've got operators that deploy that on multiple machines and scale this out. This is made to scale. so. So now it's about testing that that's true. So we've got the technology is working. Now we're trying to scale it out to the cloud, see you know how many users we're kicking in it there, the weight of the entities, how many entities we end up having in the databases, can they reload fast enough? You know, testing all of the facets of the assumptions that we had, uh, but really getting the getting this technology ready to be deployed for our players to play on. Has the recent change in server player counts had any effect on PES testing or its development? Well, at first, we thought it was going to have a, an effect, uh, but the reality is the same amount of entities get stored, uh, whether 100 players are simulated or 50. Uh, so no, for the moment, there is no side effect to having more uh, player player caps because the, you know, obviously there's more entities being changed, but ultimately for the same amount of players online, whether they're divided on 50, 100 players per server doesn't doesn't change anything for PS. Great. Awesome. Uh, but what's next? Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? It's a straight line to uh, deployment, right? That's the only thing that matters right now is is to make sure that the technology can run in the cloud properly, that it scales out, uh, that if we have more players coming in, either in a short period of time or in a long period of time, that we can you know, add more provisioning, add more machines to run it, uh, making sure it operates well at scale. Uh, so when, you know, all of you guys are online to make sure that everything's functioning properly, that we cover from, we recover from errors. This, this tech comes with a lot more observability than the previous systems that we had. So we have tons of graphs and like data that's coming in from the system operating. Uh, and uh, we're, you know, the teams need to get used to this to be able to identify problems, to be able to help support. We have a bunch of new tools that we're also working in the last stretch here to uh, allow game support to uh, help players that have issues. For So uh, character repair is something that we're starting to work on. Uh, mind the word here is not character reset, but character repair, which is something that we can now do uh, that we could not do before. So that will allow us to not you know, just destroy people's inventories and items, but really go and fix one issue on there on, so that they can keep playing. So uh, we're trying to get that in before we launch it because we think that would be a very beneficial uh, for if there are corruption uh, events again. We're trying to... This, the technology is made to not have those, but like, better safe <laughs> than sorry. But so, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, the, that's really the work now is login flow and PES is just stabilization and deployment so that we can launch it. So it's it's beeline for, for 3.18 is, is all, it's like we're banging on it <laughs> until it gets in properly. Now, I know we don't like to do dates, but we got a whole lot of player testers waiting to help bang on the pipes. You want to you wanna forecast anything? Oh, no, I'm not even going to try to gamble on that one. Uh, I mean, we have it running in, in the cloud. It's running, right? But, you know, before we're comfortable not sending the ETF team into a, you know, just fire drill. <laughs> That's going to be, you know, there's a big difference between testers, internal testers, developers using the system. And when we get real users on it, it's completely, completely different, right? And uh, so it's hard to say for me, like, I can't, I don't want to forecast it. That's fair. That's fair. Now, before we let you go, I want to reiterate that PES isn't a traditional feature like players are used to. When it works, Star Citizen isn't going to look any different. It'll just be another step closer to functioning like we've always intended to. 
it's it's a major step forward in stability when all is said and done. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not saying we're not going to have wipes anymore because there's always data changes that will require us to do that. But we're really hoping that the technology will allow us to have consistent data, which we don't always have right now. Uh, you know, all the every player has had horror stories of so, you know how they're you know losing their movie glass or their eyes. <laughs> uh, which is uh, incidentally one thing I discovered in this project is that if you don't have eyes, you don't see markers in your visor. That's an interesting one. Uh, but uh, so trying to make sure that the data, uh, you know, the technology will make sure that the data is safe and sound. So obviously less corruption. So that's the first thing we expect. Second one, stuff will persist. And to be honest, at this time, we don't totally know what that's going to mean when we put real players in it. Right, so right. we we do have life cycle systems and cleanups and all that stuff. Yes, we've planned for that, but we don't yet know what you guys will do with it, and that will greatly affect how the technology functions. Right in the end, uh, so that's going to be interesting to see. So as as a player, stuff you put on one server will stay there. Right, it's there until the server gets you know wiped manually. But by default, every server will just persist. You know, uh, like you said, it's a stepping stone technology. Really, what this means is behind the scenes, the simulation and the replication of the game. So simulation is the stuff that runs the physics and the rendering and the AI, right, is one thing. And the replication, which is sending updates and the state of all these entities as they're being simulated, this used to be like this, right? And now with PES and the game server, this is split into two. And that's the big achievement that PES allows us to do. Yes, we get persistent state. That's awesome. That's great. But the real thing is that we separate simulation from replication, and that allows us to do server meshing after that. And that's the whole, that's the reason why we're doing this. All right. Last question then. How do you feel? Good. I feel good. Tired. But, uh, you know, we're in the home stretch, so I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy about where we are. I'm happy that the te- the company now can use the technology and see what it what it's like to persist everything. I mean, my our dev servers are now littered with, you know, stuff <laughs> playing around, which uh, which is cool. Uh, but uh, I, I know I feel good. I feel encouraged. Uh, also stressed out because like we need to scale it right. So that's the it's that it's that ten percent that takes ninety percent of the time, right? So that's the effect I'm a bit stressed out for but it's okay i feel good about it all right Benoit, thank you for your time man thank you man so what did we learn this week well hopefully it's that persistent entity streaming may not be the most uh, visual of features but it is the next big step in realizing a universe where players can truly leave their mark the the last major milestone that'll make server meshing possible and that it's still heading your way in the upcoming Alpha 318. Now, thank you for taking this ISC detour with us this week, but don't worry, we've still got four more episodes left this quarter where we'll be covering things like hull stripping, cargo refactor, the new 600i and MSR crash lights, and more, as well as meeting the performance capture team uh, and exploring their new facility next door. And then maybe we'll stop by. His people are talking to my people. We'll see what we can make happen. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week.